I'm going to tell you a little story. It's part love story. I met my partner here at UCSC, right in the Baskin engineering area, in a computer graphics class. And uh, one of the first lab activities was like bringing in an object from home and 3D scanning it with a structured light sensor. And I brought this like garden gnome that my roommate had that we called No Pants Dan, because his legs were like flesh colored. Um, <laughs> But it's also a story of uh, over-engineering my way into a problem and then like over-engineering my way out of it again. Um, and it's also uh, cameras and imaging sensors and things that make 3D models of things are super cool and they've gotten like a lot better over the last many years. So we're going to learn all about that. So a little bit about me. I got my PhD in computer science from the University of Washington. Uh, doing collaborative photography and crowdsourcing 3D reconstructions through this game that I made called PhotoCity. Uh, and there's some other 3D reconstruction stuff in there. So this is kind of my thing, making 3D models of things, especially buildings and large spaces. So when I was getting married, I guess a thing you're supposed to do is have a cake and put a little thingy on top that represents you as a couple. So my partner and I were trying to figure out what that should be. We're like maybe we should make a 3D model of ourselves. And the imaging techniques that I was using for my stuff were all like image-based. We needed a, a depth sensor, something that would work on humans. Um, conveniently, there's this guy, Richard Newcomb, who's doing a postdoc at my lab at UW. Here he is giving a demo of his Connect Fusion technology. And the way that Connect Fusion works is uh, you have a connect with a structured light sensor, and you kind of wave it around, and it fuses all of these different depth fields together that's seen from different angles into a single 3D model. Um, so we're like, yeah, we'll do that. But unfortunately, Richard was out of town during like the few weeks that we had this idea to do this for our wedding. So we searched around online, uh, and we found this company called Shapeify, where you could either go to a fancy booth somewhere, probably in Europe, and like get scanned and they'd print a model. Um, or you could do like use their software and do some DIY connect scanning, where you set up your connect and you kind of like rotate in front of it yourself. And then you could order a 3D print from this company. So like, OK, this is what we'll do. So back to the computer graphics lab at UW now. Uh, we snuck in in like the middle of the night with our wedding clothes on when none of my friends were there. Um, and here's a test run like before we put on our fancy clothes of trying out the Shapeify software. Here's uh, like a vine of a test run of the two of us where we had to like stand very still and then like move in like eight different directions. <laughs> Uh, try not to change our pose. Um, but it, it made a model, and we ordered a color 3D sandstone print from the company Shapeify, and it came back. Like, oh, isn't that cool? Pretty cool. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, this isn't going to get any better. But the lighting in the lab was like really crappy, just fluorescent, like school lighting. And the colors on the model were kind of green and dark and sickly. And I was like, this is just not aesthetic enough for my wedding. I don't like this. How do I get this data so I can reprint it? And I go to the website for Shapeify, and there's like no way to get the model out. Um, but I could see this 3D interactive viewer that was on the website at the time. I was like, I can <laughs> see the data. The triangles are in there. I know that they're there. Uh, maybe I could have emailed them and asked them, but I, no. I was too shy. I just I wrote a program instead. Um, and conveniently, like I've made some 3D viewers back in my day since like the undergrad class here. I made a Java-based point cloud interactive tracing thing. Um, I made a streaming point cloud viewer based in Flash. I was like, I can maybe I could figure this out. Um, so that's what I tried. This is what I did, Shapeify website. 
uh, I inspected <laughs> the network traffic. Um, I saw like a big blob of 3D data coming in, but it was encoded. Um, and I was like, I can't read this. So I downloaded a copy of the like, whole website, including the local JavaScript file, to poke at and try to get it to decode the model for me. Um, somehow successfully did that and was able to like print out the triangles um, and format them in a nice ply file of like vertices and edges and triangles um, and, and get the data. And as a note, when I was making this talk, now they have server side rendering. So you drag a little box around and it makes the picture on their side so you can't get the triangles out as easily. Um, I don't know. So okay, we got the 3D model out. Yes. Here it is, uh, great. Now I needed to print it. And at this point, there was like two weeks, maybe less before our wedding. <laughs> so um, I don't think, like we couldn't go to Shapeways or something, uh, more pictures of the model. So we had to go to our local friendly makerspace in Seattle, Metrics, which is now closed, and we asked them for help. And uh, <laughs> one of the things about the model uh, was that the connect, um, the way that it worked, and my husband's like shiny dress shoes messed up his foot. So um, the, a, a person at Metrics like painstakingly reconstructed the foot for us, and that was really nice of her. And, uh, and so we started it printing. And, um, and we went in there probably like 11 o'clock at night, and it was taking a while. So we're like, OK, we'll go home. We'll come back tomorrow. And, we came back the next day, and we saw our model in the little display case. And we're like, oh, is this like a ceramics painting place where like, it's on display, and you go pick it up and take it home? And they're like, no, we printed a second copy of you to keep for ourselves. It's like, oh, that's kind of like that Robin Williams movie where he like, <laughs> keeps photos of a family when he's developing the film. Uh, also looking at their Flickr stream, like. They, oh, great, they took lots of pictures of, of the 3D print of us. So that was, that was kind of nice to, to see uh, as I was making this talk. So we got it home. Here's the color sandstone next to the white plastic. A um, couple different views of that. We made it a little bit bigger. Uh, got details in the back. We put it on our cake. It, was, it all worked out. Um, and as also I was making this talk, I went back to the website. Now you can download the data for free <laughs> since I already bought it. So I was able to you know, just get it and, and look at the color model, which I hadn't seen before. So that was, that was convenient. Um, yeah, you know. Um, and in the last minute or so, I just want to talk about it's 2020. This actually was done in like 2014 uh, when we had a connect. What would you do now? Well, now there's like a tiny little connect in my iPhone these days. Like literally the, um, the structured light sensor that the connect has, there's something like that in your phone. There's a little dot projector. It's how the face ID works. And I didn't even put this together until I was like, oh, that's where the depth camera is. It's on the front of my phone. Um, so, so I found some iOS app called Capture and I, I was using it before this talk. And this sure looks a lot like the visualization of Connect Fusion to me, um, and makes a nice little point cloud. So I think if I were to redo this in this day and age, I wouldn't have to sneak into my lab. I could do a lot of this in the comfort of my own home. I could find a place with better lighting. Um, I was very excited to make some models of my cat here. And uh, oh, we had to find her when she was sleeping. So she was like, oh, you're waving a phone around. So. Um, with that, here are three of the tools that I used, MeshLab to, make, to look at 3D models of everything, Shapeify, and this capture scan. And I also want to point out that this, like this whole topic, this project grew out of my undergraduate education here at UCSC a long time ago with like amazing TAs and graduate students. And at the time, they were getting paid enough to live here. Now they're not, so that's why they're on strike. And I urge you to support the grad strike here. So thank you. Woo.